Gemini. Hello and happy birthday, Gemini. It is your birthday month and this is your forecast for June of 2013. So I guess some of you are now starting to see that you're coming out of your little hiatus that you might have been taking. And if you're listening to this on the May side of your forecast, you might still be hibernating or feeling that you would love to hibernate. That's what May was all about. Your plants are in the 12th house, the needing to pull back and internalize a little bit and for you that is always such a blessing because you're so busy normally mentally and out there and communicating with everybody taking in all information all the time so you don't really get as much mental rest as the rest of the zodiac um, but may for you is representative of it and i just hope that you listen to those inner messages when your higher self says take a break okay because now here, June, it is a different dance and a different tune. I see how uh, May has been a month of you, for you, uh, really figuring out what it is you want to shed and let go of. It's like a, a spring house cleaning, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, what is dragging? What, what, what's like? What, what has attached itself to you that no longer serves you a purpose? May is all about letting that go and now coming into June there's this feeling and sense of rebirthing when these planets are now into your first house allowing you to be the most charming as you are throughout the whole entire year so you do have Mars along with you here in this first house and this is going to energize you power you up it's like that internal um, engine that that's just going to send you off on your wings here and you are going to pick up speed from the slowdown period that you had there in May, hopefully had in May, some of you probably just pushed through regardless. However though, um, Mercury uh, has now then moved into your second house of finances, so that's kind of like out of there. Venus also here moving into your second house of finances early in the month on the third. So for you, that that's gonna shift your focus on where um, here end of May it was all about radiance and you growing yourself and you know catching up on your needs which the first house is all about so now it's like shifting that focus back out there how can I stimulate my income how can I balance it better how can I attract more money how can I stimulate my self-worth how can I mm, bring it up and out how can I nurture that quality in me and most of you don't really like to think too too much about the financial things because you're, you're more here in your head about communicating to the world and relating to people around you and that becomes so much more important you're, you're like an information um, uh, dictionary of all jacks of all trades <laughs> you know, so it's like now here's the focus focus on this end of your life focus on the income you know, and if you do this just over the next couple of weeks here uh, in June, then you can kind of like let that go and work in the background for you as it transits through the rest of your chart until next year this time. But this is really supportive for you. You're getting that extra help and the kick and the oomph from the universe. So you don't have to really rev up those engines all on your own. That's what makes it hard. This is what makes you procrastinate because that, that little extra chip isn't there normally, but, but here you get it, you know, and then Jupiter is gonna move into this area here towards the end of this month, and it's gonna lighten your uh, financial sector for a whole year to come until summer of 2014. So I think uh, all of you can have something to say hooray about regarding that. That only happens once every 12 years, and, and so, you have a wonderful new year to look forward to that venus and mercury right now is going to start you know focusing shifting you out from where you're at gently kind of opening the doors and making you look in this sector then end of the month when jupiter gets in there 
It's like Mercury and Venus has already paved the path. Uh, the sun is going to be moving into this sector on the 20th. So, you know, you're, you're going to have a lot of stimulus on your financial situation here throughout the month of June. And uh, but, but let's go back a little bit because we got something really exciting here uh, this month. Uh, I normally don't speak too much about constellations because that's getting like too deeply into things complicated for, for most of you. Uh, but I just want to show you uh, we're going to have a kite. And a kite is a constellation that looks like a kite. So this gives you a little idea where we're going to have the Sun and uh, Jupiter on top, supported by Neptune and Saturn on the sides, perfect angles. And then at the bottom we have the full moon of this month with Pluto, which is very, very transformative and taking place there on the 23rd and 24th. And since you're Gemini, I thought you wanted to look at this because I know how you're always interested in certain details. Uh, so what is that going to do? Okay, so on the 23rd, 24th, we got the Sun and Jupiter up here. The Sun is you. That's your I am. Jupiter is abundance. It's what it wants to expand. This is going to now be in your, it has already entered your second house of income, self-worth, and those things um, by the 23rd and 24th. So they're kind of there together. And Neptune here in a perfect angle is asking you to dream. But since it's, it's coinciding with Jupiter there, it's saying don't dream little. Jupiter is saying dream big, okay? And it's okay to dream big without feeling that you're too unrealistic at this point. Because Saturn here, uh, which normally gives us our tests, trials, and tribulations, and challenges, is in a perfect angle to the Sun and Jupiter. It's in a perfect angle to that Neptune of dreams. So Saturn right here is saying, dream big and trust it. Take a leap of faith. You know, the leap of faith is Jupiter, which is ruled, you know, by, by the Fool card in the Tarot, taking that leap off the mountain. <laughs> it's like, do it now or never. So here you are with the vision of Jupiter and Neptune, having faith, Saturn saying, go ahead. And then at the bottom of the kite right here, what is anchoring it? which is that full moon and Pluto. We're not having an eclipse this month, but we've just had two of them, uh, three of them. Um, we had two solars and one lunar eclipse. But, but, you know, they're still empowering. Their energy from last month is still spilling over into this month. And then having a full moon with Pluto. Pluto is death and transformation. The old you, some aspect of you now is going to shed. And... It's those aspects that you want to shed. You know, nothing's going to be taken from you. But it's those aspects that you're done with, that you don't want, a, you know, repetition of. Um, something you'll be happy to let go of as Pluto transforms and brings out this new you. It's like out of the cocoon and now you're the butterfly. And it's tying in with what? It's tying in with your hopes and dreams, with Saturn saying it is okay. And where the Sun and Jupiter is full of abundance for you up above. So pay attention these days, 23rd, 24th. Uh, have a little meditation if you can. Uh, it, it's always nice to take those internal trips and kind of download whatever thoughts it is you get. Um, I'll be doing some meditations for you guys as we go along. Um, just trying to catch up on certain things here in my own life. But yeah, we can always join in on how to meditate if you're not... You know used to it but on this date it would be wonderful for you to do it because it's setting up a new sense of dynamics okay it's like a reprogramming in your own genetic code so to speak so whatever this new is will come to affect you long time to come so you don't want to pass it up okay that's the joy ride right there okay so Gemini what else do we have here for you um, yeah uh, Mars is in your first house will be lingering there for a little bit still uh, so that's good that's that's you giving yourself energy focus drive desire uh, and energy to, to kind of push through whatever you need to push through um, it's not allowing you to procrastinate now you had some of that there late April into May but not now you know, now it's really time to get up and running. And you will be. 
Now the new moon here on the 8th uh, is going to be in your first house of sense of self. So, you know, the affirmations for you this month is how do I want to appear now, you know, in this new cycle? And your cycle, is, it's your birthday month, so this cycle will last for a whole year. How do I want my appearance to be? How do I want to present myself out to the world at large? This is your rising sign, the first house, how you project. So how do I want to revamp that? Um, what haven't I given too much time to myself? What have I sacrificed too much of in the past? Uh, do I want to bring that forward, up and out now? Make those choices and program them there in your mind on the 8th so it can stick with you, you know, throughout the months to come and into that of next year. And then, uh, yes, this Jupiter is leaving your first house. Uh, some of you ha have had a really nice joy ride, you know, from 2012 to now. Opportunities coming that has come to you, and uh, both opportunities that you worked really hard for, and uh, some of you uh, have also seen how opportunities just came to you, bestowed upon you, doors opened up, magically, apparently, magically. But not really so. It was also all this good karma coming back to you that you had worked for in a long cycle, okay? It's more like a 12-year harvest that you were receiving now this last year. Uh, as far as getting yourself ahead, the, the persona you are. But this very Jupiter now, the 12-year cycle, is shifting into your finances. This is where you're going to be harvesting here now between now and that of summer of 2014. So you have that with you, uh, Geminis, and I think you're going to love, love, love that. Um, on the 7th, I see that there is a, a romantic time for you. There's Venus-Neptune trying. Uh, there's also trying Venus-Saturn coming in, so that will also give you a little grounding on whatever romantic um, issues there are. If this is in the workplace, well, you know, things can really be nice for you this month. Uh, with your co-workers and your supervisors and just getting along, getting all those pieces of the puzzle to kind of fit in. Um, but yes, I, I do feel career this month will be good, as will also uh, uh, the romantic side for, for most of you. We got the 12th and 14th Venus will kind of butt heads a little bit with Uranus. Meaning, you know, Uranus will always come with the unexpected um, surprise of some sort uh, that you didn't see coming at all. And it, it's kind of affecting your, your Venetian side, your, your inner female empress, so to speak. So it could be a romantic thing. And if it's not romantic, well, then it might uh, come out of the blue and affect your, your financial situation, which Venus also rules. Um, but then again, I'm thinking whatever this is, is something that you might have felt a little disillusioned of or uh, something kind of just being uh, revealed to you, uh, somehow it's going to work out. And I think whatever that revelation could be is also very healing. Why? Because I think you've known it all along anyway. You know, it's one of those things for a long time you can go and sense, 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 sense. But here it is, okay? So you'll be able to wrap it up and put it away. You know, it, it's the Band-Aid and the scab, right? Um, there's no scab on it. There could have been for a long while, but at least now it provides healing for you. And then we have some action. 19th, 20th, we have the Sun and Mercury. Uh, uh, both of them kind of doing a dance here with both Jupiter and Venus. So expansion, joy, movement, party. Uh, great time to have a party um, and for you this will be between your first and second house um, uh, Jupiter is already at that point just about not quite yet but just about concluding itself there in your first house so uh, the, these conjunctions here they're uh, kind of opening up these new doors for mm, abundance okay uh, when we have the Sun and Jupiter conjunct it happens one day once a year and it is a day where we, we just feel blessed, you know. And those of you that has a Sun-Jupiter conjunct at birth, you get to have this throughout your lifetime. The rest of us, we only get a visit once a year. Anyhow, on the 20th, the Sun will move into the nurturing sign of Cancer. 
this then will be your uh, second house of finances. You're going to see how you're going to be focusing on that so much more now throughout the month of July. And then Jupiter following right behind it on the 25th, just a few days later, it's going to anchor itself into your financial house for a whole year at that time. And then we also have a Sun uh, trying Saturn on the 25th. So if you have anything that needs to be signed, agreements or any kind of communications with the higher ups, great day to schedule that if you can and be in charge of it. And then we have the full moon on the 23rd, like I said, when we're speaking about that kite. So a lot of activity here at the end of June. Um, so I would say in the overall, um, it's a good month. Okay. There's only one thing that we all need to be a little conscious of, and that's Mercury going, um, retrograde here on the 26th of June. Um, so no contract signing, no, no nothing, you know, there for three and a half weeks, because if we do things go haywire and remember this Mercury is in your second house for finances and you don't want to uh, jeopardize or jinx anything financially right for the year to come so especially for you Gemini with Mercury being in your second house uh, hang in there to like the third week of July and I'd say if you can extend it even to the end of July nothing is better then you're out in the safe and you got the green light again so I think this is what I have for you uh, basically here for this month of June, uh, Gemini. It's always such an inspiration to speak to you. I love, love, love hearing from you. All your comments, there has been plentiful and I've got to meet a lot of you on a personal level, the mini readings. So I just want to say it is always inspiring to be here for you. So have a great month and I will see you next month. Listen to your rising sign and your moon sign. Bye now.